right, so here's uh, tonight's problem. Uh, we got to put a big hole in this, uh, and it gets threaded actually, so we have to drill a large hole, and then it gets uh, threaded, and it gets split, and then it gets counterboard. So there's a little bit of work left in these. Um, so it's kind of a weird piece to set up. So I think it's worth it in this situation is to uh, to kind of stack these up and do them uh, in one shot. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll locate uh, using a gauge pin here through there we go through them and then uh, uh, instead of just clamping them down, I have these nice holes here. We'll we'll just uh, we'll just bolt them down. Okay, so I got a chunk of junky aluminum that we're going to use, um, and we're just going to drill and tap a couple of holes in there. Uh, yeah, looks pretty good. So I'm just going to mark one of these holes here. It's approximate center line that way, and approximate center line that way. Um, I know, I know the distance between those holes, so what I'll do. drop down here like so and then I'll just pick up the line that's my Y and that will be my X okay so I have a zero let's come back up to the Y zero and make some holes going to show you guys um, so sometimes I modify these taps if I'm tapping a lot of steel I put three flats on here now you got to be a little bit careful doing that because uh, you got tremendous uh, driving force now and uh, maybe even more than you want <laughs> if you catch my drift okay so you got to be a little bit careful there Oops. to this hole. Okay. Pretty close. You do have to make sure you get on them though. Think I'm on it. wiggle there that uh, I may want to just pick up indicate that hole well no I want to bore them in relation to that that's correct up here tonight. <laughs> All right. As our esteemed English friend would say, oh, you bastard. Get up in there. There you go. All right. Okay. I'm 
a nice noise. <laughs> All right, so we're going to set up the boring head here. I think we'll be able to use the center hole. Okay, so uh, somebody was asking about setting up a boring head. There's not a lot to it. Um, so the cutting edge goes away from the screw. That's the way I always put it. Um, this has flats on it um, that orient the tool proper with the uh, um, the axis of the uh, of the slide, and then you want to bottom it out uh, fully in the uh, in the holder. Okay, and give it a little gronk there. Okay, and then. I have a little rubber tube that I put over the end of it just to keep me from uh, doing something stupid. Okay, almost just did there. Uh, it's it's you know when you're swinging in, it's really easy to chip the tool uh, if you're not paying attention, which would describe me. Come on, and then you got to find the damn key in there. I don't know why Bridgeport or whoever decided to put a damn key in there. You don't need the stupid thing with the caper. And it just causes trouble, so... Okay. Snug that down. Okay. Now I can pull my tube off carefully. All right, and I'll bring you in a little closer and we'll, we'll get it set down here. Okay, so... You want to leave some space here, that way you can get in to take measurements uh, as long as you have a, enough travel to, uh, to get through where you got to go. Okay, um, so that looks pretty good and I can get a telescoping gauge in there and measure. So I'm going to set this, um, you know, close to the edge of the hole and just kind of lock the quill for a sec. And then I'm just going to run it out. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep running it out until I make a little scratch. And this is one of these things that's uh, need another hand, or you got to have the quill lever in the right spot. I'm just looking. It'll make a little. It'll make a little sound. Okay, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, I don't think you could hear that. So I just scuffed the bore there. Okay, so I know I'm close to my um, my uh, bore diameter. Okay, well, I also know that I'm going to be bigger than that too. Um, so I, I want to take a cut that will will clean up. But what I'm going to do, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to bring you up. Okay, so we scratched the bore. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take a little a little cut, but I I'm on a kind of an odd number here, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna cruise around and I'm just gonna land on the zero, okay, like that. Um, and then when I take a measurement in, in my bore, then it just makes the math a little easier, okay. Um, the other thing is there's some controversy on the uh, you know whether you lock the uh, the locking screws or not so the way I do it is I leave some tension on these and I don't mess with them ever so once you have a tension where you can move the head around I just leave it and uh, I don't lock and unlock it okay because things move around when you do that this it's kind of steady state you can move it around and uh, it's predictable and that's what you that's what you're kind of looking for okay all right let's, let's make a cut Pretty tasty. All right, I'll take a measurement. Now you see, I got a li enough room I can get in there. All right, and get my do my thing. Okay, and then the initial couple of cuts, I I just use calipers so I don't make a bozo uh, micrometer reading problem. Okay, one inch eight thousandths. Um, so I got a ways to go. And our target is one inch one seven. One inch one 
72. All right, that's our tap drill size. All right, so I don't know. Let's uh, one inch, eight thousandths here. I don't know. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take 50. Let's 50. Oh yeah, a piece of cake, man. All right. Okay. There she goes. Okay. Okay, so here's a little tip. Um, what I do, so this theoretically was the finished pass here, um, but in case it is, uh, what I want to do is I don't want to leave a scratch. Uh, you know, the tool flexes as it's uh, as it's cutting, right? So there's a little bit of um, it'll leave a track when you uh, when you bring it up. So what I do is I line it up with one of the axes, in this case the x-axis, and then I just back it away from that edge and then come up. Okay, so there's my tool tip, right? And then I don't leave a nasty little spiral in the bore or a little line or whatever. Uh, you know, if this is a seal surface, for example, you wouldn't want a line uh, running uh, up and down that surface. So uh, anyway, a little, little tip there. Now, let's see how we did. Um, it's just a tap drill hole, so, you know, it's got uh, plenty of, uh, of tolerance there. But, you know, it's always fun to... Uh, See what you can do there. Try that again. Okay, that felt better. All right, so it looks like um one over, two, yeah, one over. Okay, can live with that. All right. Okay, so. Got our tap drill hole, uh, and now we got to set up for uh, for tapping, which should be interesting too. Uh, it's a rather large tap, eh? This is an inch and a quarter, twelve. We got a little bit, a little bit of wiggulation there, so we're gonna just wind this thing up in there carefully. Like so it's gonna expand and help us align that. Like so, so it gives us a little bit of a surface there to work with. Help find its. Uh, Find its center. Yeah, you know, I could indicate it, but uh, it doesn't really matter for this thing here. Okay. Get it out of there. Okay. Yeah, feels pretty good. All right, so we're going to use our. Uh, this is a special countersink uh, made by a company called Nober. Um, and has a user sharpenable blade, which is kind of nice, and it's a large size. So we're going to use that. We'll see how we did on our, our line up there. It's uh, pretty good. Go a little more. Not bad. Yeah, you know what? So what we want is we want a little bit bigger than inch and a quarter, like 
that. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll tap our uh, inch and a quarter 12 here. Plenty of oily oil on there. And we're going to use our A bomb sized uh, tap wrench. center in it. Now I'm using a non-spring loaded center. Some guys might say, hey, we use a spring loaded center. Um, for heavy tapping, I kind of prefer a solid center myself. And what I do is just advance the quill down as I, as I go. And uh, I'm pulling down on the quill and, you know, keeping that solid center in there. Now at some point, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to uh, turn it with one hand pretty soon <laughs> pressure's going up so I lock the quill lock a little bit then I just pull it down a little at a time just to make sure that the center's most of the way in it once you have it started pretty straight you just uh, just follow it with the center. You, you know, you're pulling on it so hard, it's hard to, uh, you know, be symmetric, right? So, you need something to kind of keep you honest and straight there. Okay, so we got these uh, uh, side plates tapped now. So what happens next is uh, we're gonna, um, they get split and become uh, basically a clamp. Uh, the story is there's another threaded member that goes through here that acts as a bush for the, the cross shaft uh, that this, the worm is uh, uh, running on. But also what they do, um, and this is a subtlety to, uh, to getting the timing correct on both sides, is I can move the worm subtly back and forth, okay, in relation to the worm on the other side, okay. Um, and what this does is it gives me minute adjustments uh, of, the, of the relationship between this side and the opposite side of the machine. So uh, it's... And I, there's another place that I have a phase adjustment as well, but uh, um, this is just a, uh, another way you can do that is just change the position of this, which basically uh, causes a rotation here. So you can get very tiny adjustments here if you, if you need it. So I don't know if I'm going to need it, but uh, uh, it also allows me to run these down and trap this. Uh, there's a thrust component to this. Um, and trap it with with very little play uh, or no play basically I can preload against it so uh, that's the story there so let's go over on the mill and we're gonna um, uh, drill and tap uh, or and counter bore for the clamp screw and then we're gonna split these and then uh, set these aside for a little while and uh, there's some more work to do on the uh, on the plate itself We're going to use our uh, Hummingbird uh, edge finder again. It's just a coincidence that it works out for this. That's about where our hole is, so let's uh, pick up 
the Y here. These are an oddball thickness. Um, So there's a split, there's a split function, there's a center line or a split function on the, uh, the DRO. So you can pick up one side, pick up the other, and then come back to the, whatever the middle of that meat is. And uh, these are, like I said, they're an oddball thickness, they're a little over a half inch. Okay, so what we're doing here is, you know, we have to drill a hole straight through this, right? Um, but we gotta get a, a starting point um, so that we can get the drill started. You can't just, you know, use a stub drill or center drill or whatever uh, on a sloped surface like that. So we're going to create a little landing spot for it first, then we'll drill and counter bore, etc., from there. So make sure I'm in the right spot. And, and we're just going to peck at this. And what I'm looking for. Is I'm looking for to see the center point. Okay, once this creates a, uh, I'm past the center point, then I technically I can go in there and uh, kind of drill it. Okay, so I got the center plus a little bit. I'm going to go a little more just because. It's cutting good. It's nice and happy. All right. It ceased to be happy there, so gave me a squeak. Let me know that it wasn't happy anymore. Come over. We're going to look at uh, our scribe center line and decide how deep we're going to drill right there, which is going to be that. So this is a, a clearance drill for the screw, not the tap drill. So we got to be a little bit careful. We don't drill too far with that, and uh, so that should do it. Well. See what, uh, what happens there. Careful here. <laughs> no. Okay, so we got a, a little problem here, not anything serious, but the, I want the head of this to be, you know, kind of subsurface. I don't want it sticking out beyond that curve, right? So the idea, I was going to use my counterbore here and, uh, and counterbore that, but if you check out the length of the pilot, it's just, I can't do it, okay? Because uh, the pilot really wants to be um, it really wants to be engaged in the hole, okay? And um, so what we're going to do is, since the end mill I used has a, a little bit of clearance around the head and it looks fine, I'm going to go back in with the end mill and just sink that uh, counterbore down a little bit farther. So I suppose I could 
put this in a collet and um, let it nip away at that at that edge. But uh, I think I prefer the end mill in this situation. So uh, I'm just going to go back in there and deepen that up a little bit. So what I'm doing is uh, I want to make sure I can put the screw in there to check the counterboard depth with the end mill retracted. So uh, uh, that's what I'm doing. All right. All right, so let's peck away at that thing until we're happy. Make sure I'm, yep, I'm in the right spot. Okay, almost there. So what I'm looking at is the uh, oops, screwdriver here, the pointer. I'm just looking at this little corner right here. I want that subsurface there. Okay. All right. Forty thousand. Let's do thirty. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Okay, now we're talking. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's do the rest of them. Then uh, we'll it will hand your deburr that elliptical uh, that elliptical hole. Okie doke. All right. So let's set the uh, height of the uh, slitting saw. Um, I happen to know where the center line is in relation to the bottom. Set that on this. All right. And I added half of the uh, half of the thickness. Pretty good. Let's zero the quill read out. So you know this is just a a, a slot through. So it's not uh, you know the positioning of it isn't real fussy. I just want it to be on the center line. I w otherwise it looks kind of uh, snarfy there. Okay, let's tighten that up nice. Okay. Okay. So now we got a. Big fat slitting saw. How fast do we run that? And this uh, this particular material, this is a silicon aluminum bronze, so it's kind of hard. It's it's similar to steel in its machining quality. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our Niagara speeds and feeds chart, and uh, we're going to slide down to. We're just going to pick steel here, okay? Low alloy steel. All right. And then that gives us a uh, a cutting speed of any 
nice big wide range there, okay. Um, oh, by the way, this is uh, uh, high speed steel up here. So this is high speed and then carbide. So uh, this is anywhere from 50 to 250. So I'm gonna, we'll be closer to the bottom. Let's just start with 100 and see what that looks like, okay. And then we'll flip it over. And this tool is uh, four inches in diameter, all right. And um, so we're gonna set the arrow on four. Boop, like that, okay. And 100 surface feet per minute. It's a little less than 100 RPM, okay, which sounds kind of reasonable. Let's, let's see what it looks like. Oop, let me uh, put it in slow. All right, so uh, I can buy that for a nickel. Uh, that looks pretty good. I hope I didn't leave a screw in one of those holes. <laughs> 